Hey guys, it is Ryan with ZenFX. Now before we start this video, I just wanted to remind you that we are constantly adding new content to this channel. So if you could support us by giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, please check in the description of this video and you'll find links to our online community of Forex traders as well as a ton of free resources that we've made available to help you on your journey to becoming a consistent and profitable trader. All right, let's go ahead and start the video and I will see you in the charts. Okay guys, we are live. Let's uh let's get started. Let me uh, drop a let me drop a little thing to everybody in Facebook. Let them know what we're doing. Okay guys, let's take a look at what's going on and what we can expect in the markets next week. So, this week was a um, just it was another week of choppy consolidation very difficult to trade the dollar was down and then up right so we didn't we couldn't catch a good trend off the dollar again it was almost the opposite of what we had what we saw happen last week right last week we had the dollar push down and then push up right to end the week then this week we had it push down again push back up so almost impossible to catch a long-term trend in that scenario. But what we are hopefully seeing now, okay, as you can see right here on, on the Dixie, is we got almost this triple bottom happening off of the 61.8 retracement level. So we're starting to see some good fundamental news, uh, some good market sentiment, back the dollar again. So hopefully the dollar will continue to gain strength this week and we can trade off of that continued strengthening of the dollar the only thing that is in the way right now is you know we've got it's right here it stalled out at the end of the day yesterday um yeah friday in this a uh, little bit of a, a minor supply zone it's right there at the 50 percent level off of this minor impulse leg here, this minor move, it's right at the 50, 61.8%. I don't think that's really gonna affect it much, but this yearly pivot level, that's what we really need to keep an eye out for. Let's take a look at our, our monthly pivot levels. Okay, so again, it bounced right off of this monthly pivot. And I know that this, uh, this is in the way. Let me delete that really quick. Okay, so if we just look at the monthly pivots, bounced right there, which was right at the 61.8% level of this overall larger impulse move. So we've got that as confluence right in that zone. We want to see it break through not only the R1, but this yearly pivot level. That's what's going to really back long-term um, bullish movement in the dollar. And you know, if we can see it start to catch a really good trend like this major retracement that had just happened that we're just starting to rebound out of hopefully um, then we got some really good trades ahead of us you know it's, it's really good it's gonna be really good for us uh, trading wise let's take a look almost forgot before we get started in the pairs let's take a look at the calendar now this week is NFP okay non-farm payroll is coming out and that's always huge that's a big Friday it's always the first Friday of every month so Let's keep an eye out for that. Other than that, um, you know, it's not a lot going on. The Bank of Japan, uh, they're probably, they're, what is, I don't know if they call it prime minister or what, but he's going to be speaking, their governor, right? Um, you're going to get a rate statement from the Australian dollar, so that is definitely something that you want to keep an eye out for. We've got a lot of speeches happening. Uh, the services PMI, that's going to be important. 
that's happening on Wednesday. So look for that to affect the uh, the sterling. And uh, we got crude oil inventories coming in on Thursday. Watch for that to fluctuate the USD CAD. And then other than that, Friday is going to be a big day, big day. So we've got oil inventories on Thursday. Then we've got unemployment rates on Friday. On Friday. So those could both greatly affect the Canadian dollar, but the non-farm payroll is really what's going to drive the U.S. dollar and all our major pairs on Friday. So we've got you know, more PMI coming out. This is just um, myfxbook.com. I want to just always take a look at two different sites. Okay, so we've got a lot of FOMC speeches coming in on Wednesday. We haven't really seen those do a great deal of damage to the dollar in the past, but they, it can make it get a little spiky spiky. Okay, we've got another one on Thursday. Uh, but other than that, non-farm payroll, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 for me, on the dot. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. Make sure you're, you're tightening up any trades that you're currently in stop loss wise and or just staying out of the market altogether or close some positions in profit. If not, close 50% of your positions if you're in profit. If you're in drawdown, you might want to just put a very, very tight stop. But remember, when we have NFP news, if it, it now last NFP and last FOMC were extremely uneventful. They didn't do much. But if we get a high number on any of these NFP announcements and it spikes like 50 pips, you have to be very careful that the slippage from your broker or that your broker itself doesn't non-activate your stop loss. What does that mean? That means that if you have a stop loss in place uh, or even a pending order in place to try and catch an NFP move if you're a high impact news gambler, um, if news spikes in the opposite direction as your trade and it goes, it can go straight through your stop loss without activating it because of not only the slippage combined with the spread, but a broker may just not even allow your stop loss to activate for a minute or two, and that's enough time for price to move, as we know, on very volatile NFPs, over 50 pips, and then they'll activate your stop loss, and it's far, far lower or higher than you had it set. So do not rely on a stop loss during high impact or high volatility news because uh, you know if you're dealing with some bucket shop broker and they're taking the other side of your trade, it is in their best interest for you to not get stopped out of that position and to take as big of a loss as possible. Because, like I said, they're on the other side of that trade. Okay, they're they're uh, they're more interested in you hitting your uh, margin call. To be honest with you. Okay, so we've got our trade plans in place for the the dollar. Could do one of two things. It can continue on up at the beginning of market open and then bounce off of this yearly pivot and then continue this rally. Could form kind of a, a double top with this area that had happened over here prior and form some type of a double top. We even have price hesitating even further down. And that can be an overall continuation, uh, this could turn into not a retracement, but just an overall bearish market for the dollar. And th that would be definitely not in our best interest if that happens. Strong dollar means, you know, we can really put emphasis on our USD pair trades. But the other two options that we have, it could break through this yearly pivot level. If it breaks through the yearly pivot level, then I'm more than certain that we'll see it climb all the way back up to form a double top at this area and hopefully continue on up. And this would just be an overall, just a, a retracement. Because as you see, it reacted to the 61.8 from this larger impulse movement. Okay, from all the way back here, this is our impulse leg. So if we see it retrace, or if we see it turn back around now, then yeah, it was just a, it was just a very simple textbook 61.8% rally, and then we can see it continue on upward, and we'll know exactly what to do if it continues on upward. Okay, all right, let's take a look at our first pair. It's going to be AUDUSD. 
Okay, so the Aussie versus the dollar. Uh, you guys know I'm not a big fan of harmonics, but this is a nice butterfly pattern that is playing out right now, and it lines up right with our descending channel. So we could see a possible counter trend trade as we've seen once here, and then we had another one play out here. You can't see it too well, but along the outer edge of this triangle shape is another counter trend line. We had a break of that, and we had, this is the trade that we took this week in both the signal channel and the trade room from last week. Uh, great trade, 86 pips, it went for 120. Um, it was just a great break and retest entry of this counter trend line. Keep it simple. You know, I don't like to trade in the middle, but we had this minor supply level uh, going in our favor. So we took that trade and we won that trade. So I'm happy on that. So if we see something like this, if we see like this trend line break, we get a reaction at this channel, look for this to be like a reversal zone of not only the bottom limit of the channel, but of this harmonic pattern. It can extend all the way down to 2618, but we'll deal with that if we get a break of this channel. For now, if we get a bounce off of this, a rejection at this lower level, um, yeah, let's look to take a, a counter trend trade. But that being said, if we're talking about a strong dollar, what we really wanna see is just a continuation down. And so for that, uh, like I said, if we get a break and a retest, let me turn this back on. You know, if we get a break of this, this trend line, this counter trend line here, well, yeah, I don't wanna say it's a counter trend line, it's a trend line going with our overall bearish bias. You know, then we, we might wanna to look to take a counter trend trade, which would be bullish back up to at least either this level or up to the upper limit of the channel. If we get a break first of this, which is where it's at right now, it's, oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at something. I was looking at this for some reason. So we already had a break of this kind of minor support level. If we see a retest of this in conjunction with a break of this trend line, then that's possible bullish trade. If we see it get rejected at this level, like I said, wait until, what I'm talking about is if we go here and then it gets rejected and continues down, wait until it breaks out of this channel until taking that trade. Because like I said, even with a rejection here, it can still reverse because of this butterfly pattern. Um, just something to keep in mind. Again, don't try and predict what the market's doing. Just have your options open and whatever happens, then trade based on what you see in front of you. Just trade what you see in front of you. Okay, let's take a look at Euro USD. So finally getting a retracement on Euro USD, or I should say an end of a retracement, because this whole rally that's been going on for the past two weeks has been the um, has been the retracement. It's been the retracement of an overall larger bearish movement. So we got the break of this counter trend line earlier in the week. Now we're finally starting to see a drop and we just wanna see a little more confirmation. Now there's two things that it can do. I said it got rejected right here at the 78.6. It could push back up at the beginning of the week, do a false move week beginning and form maybe like a double top here, maybe a nice M formation. We've got great overall bearish divergence still in our favor as long as it doesn't break this trend line down here on the RSI, then we could take that as a double top entry. If not, if it keeps pushing down, I'd wanna to wait to see it break through either this minor support level or this major support level and retest at that before looking to uh, enter a short trade. But if we can get in early, we could see the Euro USD continue to go bearish for a long time, and now is a perfect entry right after this rally. Um, so just keep an eye open for that. So that's what we wanna look for um, with EU. Okay, GU, I obviously have not taken a look at this chart yet today. 
had some old, this was just something I, we were talking about in our uh, APAC live trade room that we had yesterday. Uh, we like to do a, a quick market review at the end of the market week for the advanced price action students uh, so that we can talk about what happened, what were the possible ways that we could have entered into that market, what do we want to look for next time. So it's always good to do an after action review. So now that we've got this new higher high, what we're going to want to do, we've been in this descending channel on GU for a long time. So now because of this massive break right at this quarter level, now we want to adjust our channel, rest it right there on the bodies, okay, adjust the bottom limit, okay, right here with the lowest point, which was in conjunction with this butterfly that had played out a while back. And now we want to take a look at what are the possibilities for looking at. So currently we have this counter trend line and we want to see a break and either a break and a retest uh, or a break and a continuation at maybe a minor level. So we have this level here, okay, pretty easy to spot. Look at that. Look at how we've got perfect hesitation three times, one on one side, two on the other. So this is a pretty legitimate level of support and currently currently support, but it was resistance at one time. I gotta turn that drawing tool off. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier for us. What, what I wanna do is I'm going to delete that alert and I want an alert here right at this level so that when price comes through there, I want to know because I want to know once it breaks, it can either retest this level or retest our actual channel itself. And look at this beautiful bearish divergence that we have going on here. Okay, let me change the color so it makes it a little more obvious. So we've got price making a higher high, a very obvious higher high. And look how over bought this is on the RSI. That's always a very good sign that we need to start taking divergence into consideration, especially on the four hour. Very, very strong on the four hour. So we've got bearish divergence. You see how bullish divergence played out last time, went for quite a while. So off this peak, it went for about 330 pips. Very nice. So let's hope to take this one down to maybe the bottom of the channel. We don't know, could be, let me turn this off, good, okay, so just want to keep that in mind that we're getting good, it's right at a major quarter level, we've got divergence, we're right at the top of our channel, so a lot of good things right here on GU, if we get a strong dollar, if, we, if the dollar keeps picking up strength, this should be a very easy sell, okay, this should be a very, very easy sell. Uh, I mean, the GU is probably going to be our, our no-brainer of the week. If As long as the dollar continues to push up and we see a good entry, we don't get like a runaway candle like this one, if we can get a breakout and a retest, no, in this area here or here. Oh, it's never on when I want it. Then we will have very, very solid short entry and short trade. This one could go for a while. So keep an eye out for that. I'm, yeah, I'm really like, GU is definitely on my must, must see TV list for this week. I would definitely put it on your guys' as well. Uh, NZD, USD. So the Kiwi had a really good break of the count. Like this is what we want to see happen with GU, but it already happened with Kiwi dollar last week. So we had price come up, tapped the 78.6 twice. That's our deep, deep retracement level. Um, so we're starting to see it drop. It already broke our counter trend line here. Again, it's the same as GU. We're in a descending channel. We've adjusted it for this little spike that happened earlier in the week. And so now we're here. 
And this might be one where unless we get some type of a retracement, like a rally, one, one more rally, then don't know if we're going to see an entry on this one. It's just hard to say because it's already dropping. So if you're not already in NCD USD or you haven't taken, you didn't take this trade last week, uh, might end up being a, you know, a woulda, coulda, shoulda trade, one that got away from us, the one that got away. But you never know if we get it to bounce back here to the 61.8 or even the 50%, we could see a possible good second chance entry. And if you're already in this, it could give you a possible uh, place to stack an order onto you know, to uh, get a second entry or a second position. So yeah, this bad boy just may keep on dropping. Keep an eye on it though. Like I said, if we get a chance, a nice pullback or a rally to get an entry into, then we can continue this bearish momentum and keep following it down. So keep an eye on it. Keep that one in the back of your mind. I'm going to put a, an alert on this one right at this 61.8% level. I want to catch it. Actually, I'm going to put one both places. I want one on the 50, so I know if it is pulling back up, I'm going to want one on the 61.8 uh, to know if it's at our optimal entry. So this is a good entry. This is the, our ideal entry. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So always have that game plan. If we see a rejection here, you can jump in. It's going to be aggressive because your stop loss is going to be need to be way up here. Let me show you what I mean. If you get in on the 51, if the 50%, and this is your first entry, the maximum that we're looking for is 100% right here, down to the bottom, making at a minimum a double bottom, okay, on the on the higher time frame. Your stop loss needs to be above this most recent swing high plus some. So we're talking about the 88.6. Okay, that's the last swing high plus a little bit of a buffer. That's about 83, 85 pips. That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. Where if we get something more like up here and it forms a swing high and rejects, we can have a much, much tighter stop loss right about here. Okay, because we're basically trailing that swing high down the same way as if we would have entered even earlier. Now that's about 30, I'd give it 35, depending on where you get your entry at. You're probably not gonna get it right on the 61.8, but if you're in that area, 35 to 50 pips, good risk to reward ratio when we're talking about a possible 140 pip, 120, 140 pip move, again, depending on your entry. So. As usual, the best trades, the ones that are going to keep you in this game the longest are the ones you can get a three to one risk to reward ratio. It, I'm not saying one to one isn't, isn't you know, that I don't take a one to one every now and then, but your core strategy should revolve around a three to one risk to reward ratio. I talk about that extensively in, in the APAC course in the Fibonacci module. If you do the math over the long term, if you go one to one, during consolidated periods, you'll end up in a loss, and in trending periods, you'll make minimal gains, and it'll be very, very hard to scratch out a living that way. So you want to try and look for the ones that give you a better risk-to-reward ratio. That's what's going to keep you profitable long-term. Okay, let's see here. UCAD, I don't think I've looked at this one yet today. Uh, UCAD's a hot mess. No, no, okay, I have looked at this one. So let's take a look. So. Off of this first impulse leg, we had price um, anytime trading view. So off of this major impulse leg here, okay, which forms our, our support right now, our minor support, we had basically top of the channel, the bottom of the channel. Once it started retracing, look how it made that almost triple top because of this, uh, this big spike, but we had more technically a double top right at the 61.8% level, okay? That nice M formation. And it was a damn near perfect rejection right at that double top. So we have price drop, okay? Now we have price all the way down here retracing. 
So let's get this out of the way just so it's not confusing. I want to take a look at something real quick. Was this a 2618? Look at that. This is why the 2618 trade is my absolute favorite trade. Look how perfectly on the four hour this played out to be a 2618 entry for UCAD. And then that drop was just phenomenal. This would have been your entry candle right here. This one that closed right below the 50. And what did that drop for? Dang, hundred almost 170 pips. Good trade. Good trade to take, most definitely. So this was a 2618 trade. We say that because we have the double top making the two, and then the 618 is the retracement off of the second leg of that M formation, off of this. Comes back up, taps the 618. It's basically, if you didn't catch this trade earlier, now you can. So now we take this down from here to here. Where is price now? Price is right here at the 61.8 again from this impulse. Okay, that's our impulse leg now. Now we're at 61.8. But if the US dollar continues to strengthen, this is going to go up, not down. It's also going to depend on, again, crude oil inventories that are going to come out on Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. So what we really want to see, unfortunately, is a continuation up with a strong dollar, even though it's at a really great place to continue on down. Now, if we see the dollar do a false move at the opening of the bell and weaken slightly more before it starts catching any strength, then this is our scenario. Bottom of the channel and then continuation upward or a rejection here just at this major quarter level. So that would also be our other scenario. If we see price drop just real quick and then continue up like right at that quarter level gets a rejection, shoots on up and then what we've got is a breach and a, a breakout basically of this smaller channel, this descending channel that's formed inside of this larger ascending channel on US CAD. Okay, so that actually turns into a great play because this, form, this channel forms one massive counter trend line. And you can see it's kind of building up pressure inside of this little uh, let me, do, 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 do we have one? We do not. No, wait. Here we go. It's building up pressure inside of this kind of larger triangle. Okay, this nice symmetrical triangle that Bryce is building up pressure inside. You can actually extend it all the way up to here where we started getting that movement. So it could just bounce in between here until it decides to pick a direction. We just need to be ready for the breakout. Strong dollar, it's gonna break out to the top. If for some reason the CAD starts overpowering the dollar because of oil inventory news or market sentiment, yeah, then our, count, our, our, our second play is gonna be, you know, wait for the breakout and the retest of this larger channel and you know it's going to be it's going to get messy it's going to be very hard to predict the movement from that point on but like i said let's not try and predict what the market's going to do let's just have a game plan in place and just trade what we see once the market starts moving just trade what you see simple easy okay keep your trading very simple let's look at USD Swiss franc. Um, hold on one sec. Okay, USD Swiss franc uh, had two little Netflix and chill moments here. So we thought we were going to be seeing 
a inverted head and shoulders pattern form and a breakout to the top, but the dollar, okay, the dollar weakened and instead just fell over the last couple of weeks. So we never saw a break of this neckline. It never once broke this neckline. So we never entered that trade. What ended up happening was we saw this range that had formed and we wanted to wait for the breakout of that range. The top was the neckline. The bottom, okay, was the bottom of this box. And what happened was it broke out and it never looked back. Okay, broke out in a very, very big way. And so we never had a chance to really look at where was it going. Um, yep, kind of played around this monthly pivot level. And we've gonna, we're gonna have new monthly pivots coming out on Sunday night, Monday morning. So those are gonna get completely recalculated based on the movements of this last month. And we might need to take a, a quick glimp, glimpse back at these pairs on Monday once those pairs, once these uh, pivot levels get recalculated. But as you can see, bounced off of the support one level and then formed another little range a little short-lived one, broke retest. Now this was a beautiful trade last week. It happened in the New York session, so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to catch it, but that's almost a textbook breakout, retest, drop, especially of this support now turned resistance level. Confirmation candle was here, so entry is here. Okay, stop loss, we go right above that last swing high. You know, it's four hours, so you know, you're know you gonna get about a 50 pip stop loss. And then at the end of the market bell, you're about 83 pips in profit. It dropped to about 110 at its lowest. So currently that trade is playing out. We're gonna need to wait for something else to happen. It's gonna need to break through this support level or the one below it before we can look to take any type of a trade. Uh, if the dollar strengthens, we could see it come back up to this level. If not, it's gonna to need to break through this level and continue on downward before we even think about shorting this even further. The, like I said, the smart money is gonna be on the dollar continuing to go bullish now that the retracement is finally over. And that means we wanna to look to go bullish on the USD Swiss franc. Um, but like I said, we just want to play what the market does once the market does. So just trade what you see in front of you. Uh, overall bias is bullish, but we don't have anything to really play off of to get that bullish trade in. What we could do is make a nice counter trend line here, or just a trend line. I don't, I don't mean to call it, a, it's not a counter trend line. Let's actually put it into channel. So nice tight little channel here. So if we get a breakout of this, you could have a very short, not short, short, but short lived bullish trade, nice long trade. Uh, you could take it back up to this resistance level, see if it breaks back into this box, but you've got a lot of different levels of resistance going up. So it could get very choppy. It could turn into what had been happening for a while there and just do sideways chop. So be very careful trading USD Chief. I don't see a lot of long-term swing opportunities. Might be one to just scalp this week. So unless you're very familiar with it, I would probably stay away from it. And last but not least, USD JPY. We've got our old girl Felicia. Um, great, great break of our counter trend line, much like we saw in Euro USD. So we've adjusted our descending channel that it's currently stuck in, uh, bounce off of the major quarter level, came up, bounced off of uh, this supply zone that we had drawn out, and then continued to push above and through that. Now, we don't really have any type of divergence happening on either of these peaks, so there's no indication that it's gonna continue to um, to go bearish. So what we wanna see is we've got, we've already had this break of this counter trend line, never had a retest, so it wasn't really a trade that we were able to jump into, not on the four hour time frame. 
So for this one, this is going to be our zone of interest up here. We've got the possibility that it could come up and make a double top. Okay, we've got minor level of support of resistance here at this supply zone. So just keep an eye on it. I mean, it can do a lot of different things. We just need to keep an eye out for what it ends up doing. It could hit here and then continue on down if we see a weak dollar. Um, but what I'd really like to see is for you know a nice break out of the channel, retest, and then a continuation on up. And we it might get a little bit of trouble here, but if it stumbles and retests, that could be a second entry for you to scale into that uh, trade with a second or a third position. But I think once we get out of this yellow zone, we'll be good to look for long opportunities, um, and that might go for a while. You just start to see the USD JPY recover again and continue bullish, um, even though unfortunately it's been on this. Yeah, take a look at that. On this, uh, in this descending channel for a little while now. Okay. So, those are our trade plans. Um, that's uh, yeah, that's our that's our market overview. Uh, definitely take these trade plans and do as you will with them. I hope they benefit you guys this week. I will be taking screenshots of all of these markups and posting them in both our free and our premium channels, so you guys will have that at your disposal. I'll post these on our Facebook page as well. And yeah, I just really appreciate you guys joining me tonight. Um, you know, I'm glad I can take this opportunity to share these, uh, this market overview with you guys. Does anybody have any questions before we wrap it up? I'm thinking that now that the US dollar is finally starting to bounce back, we should start to get some really, really profitable weeks in the next in the coming weeks and in the next month. And uh, yeah, if you guys are part of any of our channels, um, remember, if you want to stay a part of the Premium Signals channel, make sure that you get your payments into me uh, before Sunday night. If you want to continue on with the Trade Copier channel, remember I posted that update in our group, giving you guys all the updates uh, on how we're going to run the Trade Copier going forward. I, I think that we're going to have a really profitable uh, week this week, um, and hopefully a very, very profitable month. Uh, in case you guys didn't know, I'm running a special this week. Uh, if you guys want to be your own traders and you want to um, be part of the APAC course, if you want to take the advanced price action course, it does come with a free license to Mr. Robot this month. So that's that's a September thing. I'm going to do that the whole month of September. If you are already an APAC member, I have something extra special for you guys, so don't think that you guys are missing out. Um, I've got some really, really good stuff that I want to show you guys before I show anyone else, and I think it's pretty fire. I think you guys are really going to like it. So. As always, I'm just trying to provide as much content and value for you guys as humanly possible. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. If you guys have any messages after we get done, feel free to message me offline. Let's have a great and very profitable week this week. And as always, man, let's get those pips. All right, take care, guys.